I cannot stress enough. There's not a there's not a syllable, not an ounce of negativity towards Mookie Betts. I can't stress this enough. Mookie Betts has been one of my favorite baseball players since he's been brought up, since he's gone to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Everything this guy does and touches is pure, unadulterated gold. Here are these numbers real quick. Runs scored this year, 118. Phenomenal. Hits, 162. So he's looking, hopefully, to get the 200 hits. 38 home runs, which is a career high. 99 RBIs. 11 stolen bases, hitting 314, and on-base percentage of 411, and an incredible OPS of over 1,020. I mean, that is something else. But here's the thing. Every one of those numbers are higher for Ronald Acuna Jr. I just mentioned Mookie Betts having uh, 118 runs this year. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., 127 runs this year. I mentioned hits, 162. Ronnie Acuna Jr.'s got 190, okay? Stolen bases, 11, uh, 63. On base percentage, I mentioned 411. Ronald Acuna has got a 414. There's not a number that he's not beating him in, not to mention 313. I know batting average is kind of an antiquated uh, stat these days, but if anyone that's hitting over 300 in today's modern era, that's astonishing. And both of these guys are doing it. Only one's hitting 313, the other's hitting 334. If you wanted to use that argument in terms of Ronnie versus history, I might be a little bit more willing to listen to it. If you wanted to say, well, Ronnie's record isn't as impressive as, say, Ricky's because Ricky was doing it on smaller bags with unlimited checkdowns, I could see that being a good argument for that because it's a different set of conditions. But baseball's rules change every single year, and we don't ever qualify those records. So, fine, I'll hear the discussion. But when it comes to the NL MVP race this year, in fact, I, I had a guy call – my show in Greenville uh, earlier this week, as a matter of fact, a, a Dodger transplant who lives here in the Carolinas now. And he said, Rob, it's, it's, it's got to be Mookie. He plays more positions. He's got all these great numbers, yada, yada, yada. He had a spectacular August. And I said, I understand all of that, but there's a reason Ronnie is minus 650 and Mookie is plus 430. Uh, he said, we should be having the debate, to which I said, Deck, as much as we have said the AL MVP was over a month and a half ago with Shohei, this race kind of feels over to me. Like, I don't really feel it's a, it's, a, it's a justifiable argument anymore. It's done. It's Ronnie's award at this point. Well, I am not sold, though, they're going to go deep into the playoffs, though, because I'm really worried about that pitching. This is a pitching staff that is young and good, but the problem is they've never pitched this long of a season. Dean Kramer, who I love, ex-team at Amani Team Israel, good pitcher, really, really is coming to his own. But he's never actually had to pitch in October. He's going to be exhausted. Take Jack Flaherty, a guy that's never been healthy uh, for years. I'm glad they picked him up in the trade market, but at the end of the day, he's still not putting up the big numbers. And he hasn't really pitched far into October in his career, even though he's been on the Cardinals who have gone into plenty of Octobers. So I'm a little worried about the Baltimore Orioles' out, uh, outlook going into October. What do you think about this division right now? I'll go first and say, duh. He's been awful since he's been there. In fact, he was awful before he got there. He's not pitching well this year. It's been a bad year for Max Scherzer. That doesn't mean he can't obviously go out there and toss a no-hitter in his next start. He could because, he, again, he is Max Scherzer. But so far, yeah, he's left a lot to be desired. He has not pitched well for Texas. The Texas Rangers need him to be Max Scherzer, especially now that they're on the outside looking in right now on the playoff picture. They need him to go out there and pitch six strong innings with under three runs uh, given up. That's what they need, especially if they're going to be injured offensively. Man, they, their pitching needs to be through the roof. Ivaldi has not been good since he's come off the IL. Dunning did a phenomenal job supplementing everybody in that time, but you need more than Dane Dunning. Scherzer needs to show up if this team has, a, has any shot of catching up to the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree, though, not – as harshly uh, as Cody Decker there since he showed up uh, since he showed up with Texas mm -hmm. you're either getting a phenomenal game out of Scherzer or you're getting nothing in his opening game six innings pitch seven pitches three then he turned around the next inning went seven innings gave up three hits and one arm run next inning uh, next game seven innings one hit zero or runs but the next phenomenal. inning 
3.2, three hits, three earned runs through three innings. Then the next game, seven innings, two earned runs. The next, I mean, it's it's been absolutely ping-ponging up and down. So he's not, he's had games where he's been atrocious. He's been, he's had some games where he's been very good. But the problem is the Rangers can't get there if Scherzer is pinging between good and bad. He's got to be 75, 80% of where he's been so far. Uh, so I'm going to say, it is not his overreaction. He has not been what they need. He hasn't been atrocious, but he just hasn't been that high-level Max Scherzer that they traded for. No, and keep in mind, what was his last outing against the Houston Astros? Shellacked, and honestly, a borderline embarrassing outing for him, and that was the game they needed him the most, and he didn't show up. So, does it mean it's over? Absolutely not. He's got a couple more starts for this team, and he can absolutely get them over, but like Rob Brown just said, if he's here, if he's a roller coaster, this team has no shot. If he's there and he's Max Scherzer, this team's in the playoffs. I'll go first on this one. I'll say that does make sense. Uh, I think that they should uh, – I'm sorry. Present that in a way which one makes sense and which one it doesn't because I do think that the Rays should have shorter odds to win rather than the Seattle Mariners. So I, I honestly don't think they should be neck to neck. The Rays are a better team. That's not just – hyperbole this is a team that's gone deep into the playoffs multiple years this is a team that has been at the top of their game for a long time and the only reason the Mariners are currently here is because the second half they've gone absolutely crazy now keep in mind this is a team that a month ago was borderline selling they traded away their their closer Paul Seawald which by the way I think they might regret doing the fact that they've lost two games late in the last week um so trust me yeah I do think that they're both playoff teams I think they're both great teams but the Rays should have shorter odds to win the World Series, win, make it to the playoffs, all of the above. Having them next to neck, neck to neck makes no sense to me. I was actually very concerned that that Decker was going to say the other way around, but no, I, I think you're right. I mean, let's not overlook the fact that the Rays in a division that has been better longer, although the AL best is where it is now, for about 70% of the season, the AL East was the best division in baseball. And the Rays are nine, excuse me, seven games up on Seattle right now. Uh, now, the interesting thing here is we know the Rays are going in as a wild card, right? Or at least I'm convinced they are. There's still a chance that they yeah. win that division. A chance, but a low one and a dwindling one. Uh, the Mariners still have a very good chance to win that division. They're a half game out of winning the division. So I think the reason you have these odds here are because if the Mariners can overtake Houston and win the division, obviously that is going to give them some extra home field advantage. It is going to give them a first round buy that the Rays will not get and the Rays will spend the entire playoffs on the road. So I suspect if we're talking winning the overall AL and representing in the World Series, the reason those odds are identical aren't because the Rays aren't a better team, Cody Decker, but because if everything plays out and the Mariners do end up winning the West, they would end up with a significantly easier path to do so. And I think that's what's reflected in these odds. Mm -hmm.